Hey guys, this is Maliha, and in today's Canva specific video, I want to show you a cool trick that you can do with Canva. So, as you can see, the image that I have in front of me, this is pretty cool, right? It looks like um, I have this um, letter that says, uh, sorry, the word that says recharge, and there's like a sunset image or something, sunset, sunrise, whatever image behind the letters and it kind of looks like the image is in the background and then all the letters are kind of sitting on top um, of the image and they're acting like um, transparent uh, frames or transparent lenses through which you can kind of see the background um, but yeah I, I think it's pretty cool um, Effects like that are pretty awesome. I love them, but it's kind of hard to make them with Canva or so I used to think. But then um, when I started like uh, playing around with how frames work on Canva and how you can play around with images within frames, I figured out how to do this where it looks like um, these letters are like lenses that are showing you what's in the, what's behind those letters. So um, let me show you how to get that cool effect with Canva basically. So I'm going to create a new design and I'm for this one I'm using the website one. Um, basically the website um, template. And the reason I'm using it is because, as you can see in the original, it's a, it's a cool, um, small, uh, kind of narrow rectangle-ish. And the website um, template is something of a unique template where you can kind of enlarge or make the, make the size small just by dragging these sides, which is different from, you know, any other design. So, for example, if I make a Facebook graphic or something, like a Facebook ad, for example, um, then you, you don't really have these options to change it or resize it. You have to go to resize if you're on Canva Pro. You can go to resize and you can input the exact uh, width and height you want. And then you can resize it that way. However, if I don't know exactly what I want, exactly what the width and the height it's going to be, then it's kind of fun to just go with a website template um, and then play around with the size because I can just drag and make them small or large. So that's a cool thing about the website templates. Anyway, so I'm going to start with this website template. And then I want to recreate what I have here. So um, I'm going to go back to this design. And I'll just give it a background color so we can see exactly what's happening. So something like red. So it's dark. <laughs> and you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, and what I want is um, I want to write uh, recharge using letter frames. So if you go to elements in Canva um, using, uh, it, you'll find this in the side tabs. And then uh, if you go to scroll down until you come to frames and then click see all. And there are tons of frames here. Like you can scroll down like forever and they're like all different kinds of um, frames including letters and then letters have different versions too kind of if you keep scrolling you'll find them at some point like here's a D kind of a like different from what we just saw earlier here's a G a small G here's a B H different types of H so there are all different kinds of frames and we don't have time to go through all of them so I'm not gonna bother with that I'm just gonna go to the search bar right here and then search for R because R is one of the letters in recharge and I will, uh, I'll select um, kind of like a, I don't know, simple R like this one, and put it here, make it a little small because our word is kind of big. We charge lots of um, letters, so something like this one, and then I will um, search for E, choose something similar style so that it matches with the R. And then I can easily resize them by clicking the corners and then holding my mouse and then dragging them. And then see this one looks like the same set of letters. 
and then H. This one looks good. Like so. And then A. Like that. R again. Recharge G now. As you can see, um, when I start resizing my letters, Canva shows me like this cool um, guidelines, this magenta. You can see that because I chose a bad color. Let's move, let's change it to something like blue so you can see easily the magenta color. Um, these guidelines are really nice because they kind of helps you see exactly, you know, uh, what kind of gaps you have between each elements and if they're, you know, the same size or not. So they kind of help you design things along the way, these nipple little guys. Anyway, um, so I have the letter now and to make sure that the letters are um, equidistant from one another, I will drag my mouse over all of them until I'm selecting every one of them. And then I will go to position and then click tidy up and boom, Canva tidies them up, making sure that each of them has um, the same amount of space uh, between each letters. Okay, so now that's done. Um, let's make it a different color again because now it's like kind of the frames are blending in. So maybe go with something like this one. Okay. Um, so here's the other thing. So now that we're doing this, okay, let's let's make it something light like this one. Okay, this is better. So now I want to make it uh, have that effect where it looks like the letters are sitting on top of an image like we see on this one. So to do that, ideally you would think that I would have a background, one single background image, and then I'll have the letters on top of the image, and then I will play with transparency to make sure, you know, something is happening. But that's not really how Canva works. Canva is amazing, but it's not Adobe yet. So, um, you know, you kind of have to have some tricks up your sleeve to um, make certain effects look like um, they are something that it's actually not. So let's see how to make that effect. Um, I'm going to go to photos and I've already used that photo before. So I'm just going to use the same one. So if I click the image and bring it on top of one of the frames as you can see the image kind of picks up like it takes the shape of the frame that it's sitting on um so that's kind of cool but the problem is that each photo like when you put a photo on top of a frame because each letters are a single frame so one photo can only take up this like only be placed on one frame one image cannot be placed on multiple frames so Unfortunately, even though ideally we would want to have just one image and then the letters on top, all the letters on top of the image, that's really not how it works. So I'm going to have to have um, an image for each of these letters so that each of these letters kind of take up the same photo, basically. But the problem, as you can see, is that how do you make it look like they're all, all the letters are sitting on top of the same image because now we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different images. The trick is to make it look like there's one image. And to do that, here's what you have to do sort of. Um, so I click, I double click the R, the first image. And once you double click it, as you can see, it kind of shows you like the image, the original image. And you can kind of move it around and make it smaller, bigger. Well, it can't. It cannot be smaller than the frame size itself, but it can be bigger. So what I want you to do is um, double click that first image, the first letter, first image in the first letter, and then make it big until it's taking up the space like of all of these letters, basically like so, kind of like that. And also I want to make it like move it up a little like that. Um, so, yeah, I just want to make sure that, um, 
the mountains can be seen through because you know the photo is kind of transparent now so you can kind of see the letters that are sitting so you can uh, move it around and see exactly where you want the mountains to show up and i want the mountains to show up kind of in the middle of all of these letters so this is this feels like a good spot um so i'm gonna place this one right here like so and then click somewhere else somewhere outside of the image to place it back into r now what i have to do is i have to go and fix each of these images for each of these letters and make sure that all of the images, all the other seven images are the same size as the first one and they're also sitting at the same spot as the first image. So for example, this is where the first image is and all the other images kind of have to take up the same space so that it looks like there's only one image even though there are eight total images. And to help with that kind of, I will use the guidelines right here. Now, as you can see, the rules are the guide, basically the rules here. Uh, there's one on the left and one on the top. If you don't see the rulers, uh, what you can do is you can come to File, click View Settings, and then click Show Rulers and Guides. So I already have it like it was showing before. So when I clicked it again, it went away. So to show it again, um, go to View Settings and then Show Rul uh, Rulers and Guides, and then it shows up again. And one of the cool tricks of these rulers and guidelines is that if you click on a, the ruler and then um, you hold your mouse and then you drag something down, there's a guide that comes down and you can just place it wherever you want, like so. And then you can just drag it back up. If you don't want it here, you can drag it back up and it goes away. So we're going to use these guides and rulers to kind of mark where our original image is, the first image is. So we will need only three guides. So the first one is going to be from the top. Um, and I will just place it at the bottom of the image. Like so. I kind of do it at the top because the top kind of goes beyond the top of the frame, the, the you know, the canvas itself. So I cannot place a, uh, the, a guide there. So I'm just going to use it at the bottom. And then I'll use another one from the left and place it at the left side of the image. And then use another one to place it on the right edge of the image like that. And then click somewhere else to place the image again. But now we have these guides. Uh, I know now that each of these images will have to have the three sides aligned with these three guidelines. So I will work on the second image, double click it and make sure that the sides are matching um, the three sides, the three guidelines like so, and boom. And then I'll do for the third one the same way as we did the first two. And like so, we are now seeing that it's starting to look like there's an actual image, um, one image behind um, all of these letters, even though they, these are all individual images and in individual frames like that. All right, doing this quickly, maybe not perfectly, but that's okay. This is just a tutorial, but it's close enough. You can see that it's matching up pretty well, like so. And then this one. pretty cool right how you can like use the guides to kind of make sure like you know even if you cannot see each of the images you know exactly where they are because of the guides like that and this is the last one so we are almost done and boom as you can see now it looks like we have one single image behind our letters. So I'm just going to get rid of the guides now. I don't need them anymore because I've already placed all the images. 
And now what I can do is I can kind of um, roll my mouse over all of these to select all of them. And then I can uh, make the letters bigger and the image will, the images that are occupying the frames, um, they will also get bigger. Um, they will maintain the ratio basically. And it still looks like there's one image behind all of these letters, even though there are eight different images. Uh, I'm just gonna put it, take it up a little bit and resize the canvas and maybe change the background color to something like we had in our original one, kind of like this or this maybe, I don't know. It's close anyway, yeah, maybe a little grayer than orange. So maybe something like this. Yeah. Okay, good. So as you can see, it's looking very similar to what we had before. Maybe my letters on the second one is a little bigger, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, this is how you make it look like um, you have one single image behind a bunch of letters and basically the letters kind of act like lenses through which you can see a background which can be a photo or something else whatever but this, the idea is same that you're seeing something through the letters okay and that's it that's uh that's our canva tutorial for the day and i will catch you again soon bye